Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California here in Studio MC3 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. Linux Newslog is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you haven't already done so. For those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing. And with that, let's go ahead and get into the stories for this episode. Starting off over at Beta News, Fedora 21 Alpha is finally here. Linux fans, download it now. Choosing a Linux distribution is much like choosing a car. There are many types. When people find a car company they like, there is a good chance that they will remain loyal. Believe it or not, I have only ever owned a Ford. I plan to keep it that way. This is the author, not me. Not much of a Ford person myself. Uh, My loyalty is not blind, however, as I still demand a consistent quality product. So anyway, uh, the the article continues on. Uh, definitely check it out if you are uh, primarily a Fedora user. Otherwise, if you're not a Fedora user, this probably won't mean much to you. Uh, over at newsmaker.com.au in Australia, keynotes and program announced for ApacheCon and CloudStack Collaboration Conference Europe. This is kind of cool. The Linux Foundation, the nonprofit organization dedicated to accelerating the growth of Linux and collaborative development, announced today the keynote speakers and program agenda for ApacheCon and the CloudStack Collaboration Conference Europe. ApacheCon takes place November 17th through the 21st, 2014 in Budapest, Hungary. Not a place I'm going to be going to anytime soon. Uh, CloudStack Collaboration Conference uh, takes place November 19th through the 21st, 2014 in the same location. So ApacheCon uh, will cover some of today's hottest open source projects, including Cassandra, Cordova, CloudStack, CouchDB, Dromino, Hadoop, Hive, HTTP Server, etc., etc. Definitely uh, check it out if you are going to be in Hungary. So pretty neat. Uh, let's see here, from uh, virtualizationreview.com, Red Hat pushes for enterprise cloud supremacy. Um, in a blog post, uh, Red Hat CEO Jim Whitehurst says it's only a matter of time. Cloud winners will be cho- chosen soon. He uh, outlined recent moves and successes of the company while letting everyone know that enterprise cloud vendor supremacy is the next target. He says, right now we are in the middle of a major shift from client server to cloud mobile. Uh, It's a once every 20 years kind of change as history has shown us in the early days of those changes. Winners emerged that set the standards for that era. Think Wintel in the client server arena. We're staring at a huge opportunity, the chance to become the leader in enterprise cloud, much like we are the leader in enterprise open source. This is pretty cool. Um... You know, I thought I would include this simply because it's not every day that uh, you have the CEO of a major software distribution, Linux distribution company, uh, writing um, verbiage for the public consumption. So pretty interesting. From the businessstandard.com, Hoya's Selfish OS debuts in India on a Snap deal. This is pretty cool. It is raining operating systems in the Indian smartphone market, and the latest to join the bandwagon is Finnish company Hola, Hoya, I don't know how to pronounce it, it's J-O-L-L-A, Jala doesn't sound right, with its Sailfish OS. The company on Tuesday launched its maiden handset running the OS available exclusively on Snapdeal for ours. Uh, Sixteen thousand four hundred ninety-nine. It is said its OS offers users a differentiated user experience compared to Android and other operating systems. So uh, the company was founded by former Nokia employees who were once part of the Mego team that was asked to develop a Linux-based OS in collaboration with Intel. That kind of fell apart and went by the wayside. Uh, the OS was discontinued by Nokia when it decided to concentrate on Windows. And now Nokia is owned by Microsoft. So 
that went uh, really well for them. Anyway, if you're in India and you are looking for alternatives, definitely check it out. From arcweb.com, Mentor Graphics delivers commercial Mentor embedded Linux platform and graphics enablement for AMD embedded devices. Mentor Graphics has announced the availability of the Mentor embedded Linux software for AMD embedded G series system on a chips, previously codenamed Step Eagle and uh, Crowned Eagle, and second generation R series APU, previously codenamed Bald Eagle. Uh, Developers who began evaluation, prototyping, and development by downloading the previously announced and freely available Mentor Embedded Light and Sorcery Codebench Light products can now easily migrate to these new commercially supported versions. Developers can make use of the Mentor Embedded Linux and the Sorcery Codebench integrated development environment products to create applications targeting markets such as digital gaming, point of sale, and electronic signage slash displays. Pretty neat. Definitely check it out. From uh, virtualstrategy.com over at the Virtual Strategy Magazine website, Cisco Networking Academy adopts course aligned to LPI Linux's, and I just got a pop-up ad, Linux Essentials Certificate. As Linux technology adoption continues to rise across industries, so too does the demand for a skilled workforce. In response to this need for those with strong Linux skills, the Cisco Networking Academy recently announced the global availability of a course developed by the Network Development Group that makes mastering the basics of Linux accessible to students worldwide. Aligned to the Linux Professional Institute's Linux Essentials Professional Development Certificate, the course covers the fundamentals of the Linux operating system with an emphasis on the command line. Refreshing. I can't tell you how many people we interview... Uh, at work and they have trouble getting around a Linux command line and you know it's it's really disconcerting it's like you this this is command line is really a skill you got to have anyway uh definitely check it out if you are looking for uh schools to go to if you're a little bit younger and looking to break into the job market from a bit smart um or crypto Co is news.com, I guess is the website's name. Open source DIY Bitcoin wallet with Raspberry Pis. I thought this was pretty neat because, uh, you know, I'm, I, I'm totally into <laughs> Raspberry Pis and Arduinos and all kinds of stuff. I have a Raspberry Pi floating around here somewhere. Uh, I don't see it right off the bat. Uh, anyway, um, Many security-conscious Bitcoin users consider cold storage on a system physically disconnected from the Internet as the safest way to store their coins. This is the article here. Uh, the downside is that if you keep your coins on an offline PC at home, you lose access when you leave home. Enter BitSmart Wallet, a cheap, secure, open-source, do-it-yourself hardware wallet prototype developed by Bitcoin entrepreneur and software developer Ronald Bell. The BitSmart Wallet is powered by two Raspberry Pi credit card-sized computers, one for cold storage and one for online transactions. Uh, pretty neat. In the they have a picture here of the device. It's it's obviously it's very um, uh, uh, prototype ish. Uh, in the picture, a prototype BitSmart board with an Ethernet cable connecting to the two Raspberry Pi units. The cold storage unit is never connected to the internet. Um, you know, he basically uh, provides an, an explanation. Definitely check it out if you are a Bitcoin user. I thought I would include it because it's Raspberry Pi and uses Linux and all kinds of cool stuff. That will do it for this edition of Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. See you then. Bye.